All right, cool. Um, so yeah, we're live at the Inforama show um, at the Mondo Gallery in Austin. Um, just kind of touring all the pieces. We got Kevin here to talk about it. He's one third of the artist in the show. So we'll start here. Hey, Kevin. Hey. So the C3PO, um, you want to talk a little bit about that one? Uh, yeah, so this is um, one of my pieces for the Inforama Mondo show that we just did. Um, that's C C3PO. It was designed to go uh, side by side with the R2, the exploded R2D2 I did. Glows in the dark, metallic inks. Uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Sweet. So, um, and, like differences between this one and R2D2, you were telling me a little bit before, like. Oh man, I think I just I just learned like a lot of a lot of new things um, when I was doing it. Uh, like I just definitely learned how to work faster. Um, but I try to keep it in the same spirit as the R2-D2 poster. So this one took you, you were saying two weeks? Or? Yeah, two weeks compared to R2-D2, which took three months. And then I did that six years ago. So okay. I learned a few things. <laughs> nice. nice. Sweet. Um, so this one is one of two Sinister Six prints uh, by Tom Whalen. So you have thoughts about this one? or? Oh, I love these ones. Um, like Tom's... What Tom did with the regular and the variant is what I love is when, like, um, for me, the, the regular um, pushes uh, the villains more, and then the variant pushes Spider-Man more, I feel like. So you kind of just have two very attractive uh, posters. Um, I really love the kind of the power levels that he put on all the... Oh, yeah. Like... So like those tra like on the back of a trading card, or like or like a video game or something. Do you have strength levels for your oh, yeah. <laughs> for your villain? I used to collect the Marvel cards, though, and they they had the same strength and ability things in the back. That's what. Okay, so maybe that's where he got it from then. Um, and this one's for Matt, uh, his Avengers kind of mandala. Yeah, that's really sweet. Um, and then I was looking at that one. I mean, I didn't cross reference it against the ones he posted on Instagram, but they're pretty much all unique. And from different eras. So, is there like a. Do these radiate out and become, I guess, newer as it gets towards the edge of the circle? Is that the idea? It looks like it. Because, see, it starts at the earliest and then it kind of, as you get further out, it becomes later? Yes, that is the case. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> I didn't That's realize that until just now. <laughs> Well, no, I was like, I was like, wait, wasn't Captain America the first Avenger? But I was like, no, it was Iron Man, and then they found Captain America a year after yeah. that. Yeah. So. Sweet. Nerdgasm. <laughs> and so then these are your two for Batman Utility Belt. Yeah. This was a lot of fun to research. I should um, post the the book that I created on um, on uh, Google Documents uh, of like we had to freeze frame like all the scenes to reference them, like, and then we do. Uh, like so when he refers to stuff, or if usually it has a label, like this says like something like anti-mesmerizing bat reflector, or he'll say it and stuff. So we had to create an entire booklet of everything that was on the utility belt just to reference it, so I could so we could proofread it later. Well, and you had to send that to the studio, right? And, and like for the studio, okay. justification for hey, this is why we're calling this this, and yeah. Um, and then I was telling you earlier that I love this kind of efficiency of communicating the season. Um, I don't know if you can get a good. You know, the season number and all of the pieces have the season number with their color codes. Um, and then the differences here. Now, besides the color change, are there any differences in this image or is it pretty much the... Uh, no, no, just the color change. And then I'm going to leave the Easter egg for people to find. <laughs> um, and then next were these four turtle ones from Tom, um, all featuring different eras of the Ninja Turtles. So the comic, the TV's cartoon, uh, 80s. 80s TV cartoon, right? Um, and then the film version, and then the 2012 cartoon. Yeah. Um, which I, I was saying earlier, I really love kind of the icon iconography of, you know, this representing what area it came from. Yeah. And, mm. That's what I love about um, Tom's work, is that, yeah, he has these like, like little things that are like, like you were saying earlier, you buy it and then you don't realize it and then you're looking at it one day and you're like, whoa, that's what that is. <laughs> yeah. so cool. Yeah, I find that's the case a lot in, in all of these prints, really. And then next up are your DeLorean pieces. So, hey. 
Uh, one is the regular here, and then the foil. I'll try to get that in a good light. Um, foil highlights. So, you know, say a little bit about this one. How did how'd you come up with the concept, and what made you want to do the I, I kind of just wanted to do, like, because um, I remember as a kid, like, growing up, like, like in the 80s and stuff, it was just, you just have, like, you know, you buy the car magazine, it has that poster that, that you can pull out of an entire car, and it's got, like, smoke coming off of it with sunset in the background you know so i want to create like yeah that kind of sexy car poster but with the delorean nice um just make them look like super badasses which they don't normally get mark doc and marty don't normally don't get portrayed that way <laughs> as cool guys you know kind right. of like underdogs so i just want to make them you know give them their due justice and i wanted to include einstein yeah and they got the nice little silhouette like the, these hardcore motherfuckers <laughs> yeah just walking out they don't even bother to close the doors and then what are the down here at the bottom? Um, In, information about the the, the vehicle. Um, here's something that we, that we is a fun Easter egg. Um, I refer to them as gigawatts. G i g o w a t t s. So with the, with a J there, J i g o. That's not how you spell it, it's actually gigawatts, but in the script it was gigawatts. That's not really a real measurement of anything. We just kept it because that was in the script. Nice. And so Doc Brown was just reading what he was told to read. <laughs> I mean, it's a cool little, uh, you know, trivia bit. And I love how the text here um, has the has the foil along with the lights and the bumper. Um, Thanks, man. I think it, I mean, it makes that text stand out a lot more, which is really cool. Yeah. Sweet. Um, so, like, when, when you're deciding on prints like this, for instance, what makes you think, okay, hey, this would work really well as a foil? Like, what made you think, okay, this one is the one I want to put foil in? I've only done one other foil print, that was um, the Ant-Man variant, and uh, it's just, it's really hard to say because, uh, like, sometimes, like, it doesn't work as well as other times. Uh, it definitely helps I'm drawing these digitally so I can do, like, a mock-up um, with, like, a, a foil paper scan image that I've saved, so I can kind of get an idea. Um, but, yeah, it's just kind of a gut, you just have, a, like, an instinct, like, yeah, I think this will look cool. Yeah. And thankfully, if, you know, it's, it's worked out. Yeah, and the, the the car having elements like this and stuff, I think it's a good fit. Yeah, it just felt, you know, it felt like it was, like just the, the thing that it is, like felt like it, it could use the thing. Because like when Ant-Man transforms, he's got like that weird holographic thing, when, like the prism thing that happens. Right, right. The DeLorean kind of just feels like the time travel thing does feel like that, that prism thing. So it was almost like the thing that, the, the context of the poster was actually calling for it. Versus if you do a poster and then you have to ask why was it on hologram paper other than just to be on hologram paper. Right, right. So. Sweet. Um, on the flip side here, we have Bullet by Matt Taylor. I think these might be my favorite in the show. What uh, what aspects of them? I mean, why why do you feel that they're your, your, your favorite? Oh, man. Well, first off, I just love uh, Matt Taylor's work. Um, he really just nailed the feeling of the movie. Like... Like, just, you don't have to know anything about it. You know, it's a car chase, it's a race against time. Like, from seriously, from, like, 60 feet away. Like, you could tell, like, you could tell what that movie's about. It takes place in many locations. It's, the posters are bold. Um, but he's also just found a great way to distill the, like, the locations of uh, where all the, the action's happening in a very organic way. It doesn't feel like you're looking at a chart. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, because it's kind of... There is as an aspect of the image, but you don't really notice. Hey, these black lines actually are meaningful, right? Yeah. Until you look closer. Um, what kind of research was put into the, all of these locations? Like I know you were saying for the Batman utility belt, you had to just watch a ton of, <laughs> of Batman episodes. Yeah. But like for this one, was it was it documented somewhere, or was you just watching a bunch of? I don't know. I I think Matt just watched it and took notes. And took a bunch of notes. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure you'd have to ask him. Which of these are your favorite color-wise? I kind of like the red one because it, it feels more intense. Mm. But I can see people liking the... Because oh, it has a very nice uh, blue. Yeah. Yeah, don't make me choose, man. <laughs> and then over here, uh, let's see what's on this side. Oh yeah, the Jurassic Park by Matt. Um, so we were saying earlier, just the colors on this are just crazy unique. Um, what about this print do you like the most? I mean, what, what's your favorite aspect of it? I think 
I mean, for one thing, if you showed me those colors, like, on, um, as, like, paint chips, I'd be like, there's no way in hell that's gonna work. Like, those colors are crazy. It's like, uh, it's like Speed Racer, like, it, like, ran into, like, a neon sign <laughs> shop. And, but they work, and they're great. Um, also, stylistically, it's a very different, uh, very different approach to the other posters. Like, the rendering on the dinosaurs is great. And, uh, you can't see it, but there's, like, a uh, detail, like, gloss. Like foliage. I don't know if that. It's like clear gloss, black on black. Yeah, it doesn't show up in the. It's very video at subtle, all. but it's, it's such a great effect. Um, yeah, I mean, there's lots to love about this poster. Yeah, it's and really it's cool. Got on it. Um, before you go here, talk a little bit about this. So we were we were talking about this earlier. In, in, and you won't even know this if you're buying these online or whatever, but people that went to the gallery show, all of these little eye icons yeah. have like a representation of what property they're portraying like icons like different yeah uh, I created a different icons to match like the turtle one's got their turtle shell Batman's got the Batman inside of that eye but the eye is the one thing that stays like the yeah the C3O has the rebel yeah. uh, logo thing I mean in this one too right so oh yeah but they've got the Empire one this is a fun way to brand the show and make it you know yeah just give a little more yeah sweet so then next up you got your uh, Forces of the Galactic Empire. So you want to uh, yeah, talk military about that? forces of the Galactic Empire. This one was a lot of fun to work on. Oh man! Uh, actually, the Star the Star Wars stuff was just was an intense approval process, and I wasn't sure if the C three PO one, which you saw already, was going to get approved. So this was actually the backup for that one. <laughs> Both of them thankfully got approved. But yeah, I was like, just in case, maybe we should double up because I'd like to have at least some Star Wars in. Because it just lends itself so well to like an information poster, Star Wars, it's, you know. Um, I had a lot of fun uh, researching the stormtroopers and uh, finding a way to portray them in a non-boring way. Right, no, yeah, I mean, it's interesting how you have all the different scenes kind of just gridded out like that. What, what made you decide which ones to do where and which ones work best together? Was um, it like a, I guess, chronographic thing or? Well, um, it seemed like like to make the most sense because like the first troops that you see are the the classic stormtroopers uh coming straight at you like the door like is cut open and suddenly they just burst through the smoke and it's terrifying i remember seeing it as a kid it was it was really scary and and they came in such big numbers like with guns so that it made sense to put them in the middle and then it's kind of like as the story unfolds and and because that takes place on the ship as the story of star wars unfolds and they go to other worlds because that's largely what defines their armors, the environment they're operating in. You start seeing like the other differences. things that necessitate their different gear, like the sand troopers, uh, the tie fighter pilots, the emperor's royal guard, and then here you got the the snow dudes, um, snow troopers, the at at pilots, and the scout troopers. But it kind of moves in order of uh, from the center out of how the the movies play. That was kind of thinking was. Uh, New Hope, uh, well, this is New Hope again, um, Empire, and then, well, I mean, I guess they, they appeared in all three movies, and then finally, exclusively, Return of the Jedi, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then this one's the gold version, um, so again, cool. Sophie's Choice, which is your favorite? <laughs> oh, I kind of like the silver one, it feels like more, uh, st stark, like, like the Empire, you know, because, yeah. yeah. The gold one's nice though because uh, I can imagine it, would, it might go better in someone's living room, like the color, color wise. Plus Very cool. the gold. <laughs> Very cool. It's great. Um, and this one is from Tom. This yeah. is uh, his Batmobile print. Yeah. Uh, this one's fantastic. This is the first thing that Tom submitted, I believe. Oh, is that right? For the show, yeah. If my memory serves me correctly. He did such a great job of, uh, of yeah. laying out the information. Yeah, I mean, I love little things like that, like infl inflate the 66 PSI. Like, <laughs> such, yeah. a, such an interesting detail just to throw in there. Well, it makes it great because, like, you can appreciate it online, but then if you buy it, like, you know, come to the gallery and, you know, put down some money, you, you get these little, like, you know, these little things that only you can, you and everyone else about it can appreciate. Yeah. I love that. That's really cool. And I love the colors, too. I mean, uh, yeah. purple and yellow work really well together. A lot of people who bought Tom's Batmobile also bought my um, uh, utility belt one because they sort of go, they look, they look good together. Yeah, they, yeah. they work really well. And well, in the same format too, so you can kind of stack them or 
put them next to each other. Remember that utility belt uh, thing was actually uh, a cancelled uh, concept from the Batman show here at this gallery. Is that right? I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, I, I did actually on this wall, remember I had all those Christopher Nolan mm -hmm. Batmans? Originally I had another idea to do like a Batmobile in, or a, a utility belt infographic and it was rejected from that show. And then so I just put the sketch online like, hey, just show me what, you know, I was up to. And then like years later, you know, it would turn around and then use the concept was able to do it. Nice. Did you, did you change a lot from what you originally were thinking of doing uh, for this show to make it more kind of info heavy or? Uh, the first one uh, uh, dealt with every incarnation of Batman. That's why it didn't get approved was mm. because it, they just didn't want to merge all those Batmans onto one thing. Or this one only focuses on Batman 66. Okay, sweet. Mm. Oh, that's good. And then over here we have Matt's Jaws prints. This is the reg and then the variant. Um, so what about this one? Um, uh, one of the things I really like is some of the differences here are more than just the color. Like this one has a capsizing boat. Um, and I understand there was, you know, a little bit more. Uh, I think that was originally supposed to be red. Is that? Is yeah. That right? Originally it was red and um, uh, the victims were shown like mangled, like in the way they are in the movie, which uh, is a great idea, but uh, it makes for poor uh, living room. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you know, stuff like, uh, uh, like, yeah, and like, you know, I mean, it's tough because you're showing like a dog being, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it was red to show the, the blood, the bloodiness, so Matt decided to take it in a different direction. Well, I think this is more matte. I mean, like, this color scheme is a lot more, it yeah. has a lot more of a matte feel than if it was just, like, a, a stark red. Yeah. Um, so it works really well. I think that's... That's it. That's it. All right, well, thank you, everybody, um, for joining us. This is Kevin Tong. Hi, guys. Uh, sign off. Cool. That was fun.